Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus chapter 17. And all the congregation of children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the commandment of the Lord. The Lord guided them where to go. And pitched in Rephaim. And there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore the people did chide, scold with anger, with Moses, and said, Give us water that we may drink. But we went already through this. And Moses said unto him, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do ye tempt the Lord? Uh oh. And the people, th I mean, the people's already gone through this. And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt? God did, not Moses. To kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst. Heard that great complaint before. And you're not dead. You were hungry before. And you brought us out here to kill us. You're not dead. And Moses cried unto the Lord saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. And add that to Stephen, to Paul, and they wanted to do it to Jesus. You gotta realize, yes, they are God's people. Yes, we are to pray for them. We are to bless them if we want to bless them. But even in the mouth of God, their Father, these people are stiff-necked and they're hard to deal with. And they are. And Paul, I think I forget where he says, he says they're even enemies of the gospel for, for the gospel's sake. They hate us because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we're still to love them, we're still to pray for the peace of them, and we're supposed to give them the witness of Jesus Christ. To the Jew first, and then to the Gentile. So we see the early beginnings of this nation. And poor Moses taking on the gripe and the complaining, like he had anything to do with it, and like he can do anything about it. They should have got down as a corporate, they are as a corporate, they are a nation, a group of people, and say exactly what America is not saying. We need to get down and ask God, say, God, we're in, a, we're in this condition here right now. We have no water. We need your help. You've blessed us before. You've taken care of us before. We would just likely to humbly come before your presence and with Moses and Aaron as our head, if we need some water, please. And America doesn't do that. Christians don't do that. And churches don't do that. And the Lord said to Moses, Go on before the people. And take with thee the elders of Israel. So the people are not going to see this. The elders, the, the chosen of the ranks of the twelve tribes. And thy rod, there's that rod again. Wherewith thou smotest the river, Nile. Notice how God brings all the way back to the first thing that Moses did for him. Turn that water to blood. Jesus turns the water into wine.
take in thy hand and go. Behold, I, God, will stand before thee upon the mount of Horeb, in Horeb, the rock in Horeb, excuse me. And thou shalt smite the rock. Isaiah 53. The rock was smitten, beaten. This is the first and only time that this rock should be smitten and beaten. I know Moses does it again, but Hebrews says he was smitten once for our sin. He sat down after he sacrificed for once for sin. So smite that rock, Isaiah 53. And there shall come out waters out of it. And let's see 1 Corinthians 10, 1. 1 Corinthians 10, 1. Scripture, scripture. We learned yesterday that that pot was a golden pot. Well, let's see what, let's see what the New Testament will tell us. 1 Corinthians 10, 1. Moreover, brethren, don't just say people, I would not that you should be ignorant how that our fathers were under the cloud, the pillar of the cloud, and all passed through the sea, we've already been through the sea, and we're all baptized under Moses in that cloud, we've been through it. So, the picture of the Red Sea was, they went through the water, but they got wet on dry ground and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat we just read that last night manna even though it was physical meat it was later a picture of Jesus Christ and the Roman Catholic Church would get that blown out of proportion and did all drink that spiritual drink here we are for they drank of that spiritual, look at that, capital R. And that's not Peter. What we're reading right now in Exodus, long before Peter ever shows up. I don't know how many generations. And follow them. The rock that followed them, this rock is going to follow the Israelites. How on earth it does it, I have no idea. And, let's not forget, said the rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Alright, so, I will stand before thee upon the rock. I am going to stand before thee on that Christ. From that rock, Jesus Christ. And Moses, you're going to smite that rock. Moses now taking on to be God the Father. God the Father is going to smite that rock, Jesus Christ. And not only does Jesus say the Holy Spirit of his belly shall flow living rivers, but out of that smitten rock will flow, I forget, it's the water and blood or the blood in the water from that spear. That's going to cleanse me of all unrighteousness, all filthiness, all, all trans, trespassing, and all iniquity. And Jesus said, I am that rock, I am the living waters. It shall come waters, water out of it. And the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. The people did not see it. And when you read the account of Jesus on the cross, they would say to priests, ha, 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 he can save himself. I mean, he can save others. He can't save himself. And the elders and the scribes, ha, 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 if, he, if, he, if he's really God, let's see him come down off the it was the religious group that was up there watching Jesus die. 
He said, well, who were the people that were there? His mother, the women that followed him, and one, and one, and one of his disciples, John. Who was there when Jesus was smitten and beaten and spitted upon and had his beard full? He was inside the Sanhedrin's office, the, the palace. Nobody saw that. That was like 1, 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. That's, that's when Peter's standing there and Jesus standing before Pilate. No, he's standing before the Sanhedrin. He's outside warming himself. John Goat comes in for the picture, brings Peter in, and then he's brought before Pilate, and he's brought in to the soldiers. There's no Jews around there when they're beating him and crowning the crown of thorns upon his head. And then they bring him out, and the people see him. And he's already been beaten when he stands before the people. Behold your king. What do you want me to do with him? Crucify him. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Here's your first rock in the Bible. It is Jesus Christ. And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah. Temptation and strife. Temptation and strife. They tempted to God. Where's our water? And God gave him praise. Because of the children of the children of Israel. And because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Oh, oh, okay. We already know they were thirsty, and God took care of them. But what we find out now is, it's not that we're thirsty, take care of us, Lord, we need something to drink. God, are you amongst us? If you would really be here, we would not be thirsty right now, we would have water. So what does God answer in their presence according to 1 Corinthians? Here's your water, and it's going to follow you. How's that sound? Then came Emelech. This guy is the grandson of Esau. He pictures the flesh. And he shows up as an enemy after you've been saved. He's been with you your entire life. But he doesn't become a method of conflict until after you're saved. And Paul will speak, I believe, as Galatians, flesh in the spirit now. Christ has made his abode in you through the living waters. Now here comes the flesh. And fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, here's the first time Joshua was mentioned, Jehovah saves. Joshua is the Old Testament of Jesus. Jehovah saves. Jehovah Choose out, uh, choose us out, men, and go out and fight them, the Mick. So, here's the first military commander in the nation of Israel, Joshua. Go get you some, go get you some men to fight. I hope he doesn't come across any Jehovah Witnesses. Well, I can't fight. We're not allowed to fight. But we're Jehovah's Witnesses. We had a couple of them today stood right in their face and said, You know what? Yeah, one thing to say to you. Thomas called him my Lord, my God. And that's all I need to say. And when we walked away, we were going back. I said, What, what year is Jesus supposed to come back? 1914? 19? You're no better than that guy that said Saturday was going to be the end of the world. Tomorrow I will stand upon the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. We we'll go from the top of the rock to the top of the top of the hill. 
You've gone from the rock to the hill when it comes to the flesh. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and fought in the mix. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Moses, Aaron, and Hur. Three people go on top of the hill. Isn't that interesting? And Amalek is not your friend. He's never your friend as a Christian. There's Moses, the, the, the prophet, likened unto me. There's Aaron, the high priest. And I don't know anything really about her, where he was put in. But two of the men that were on the hill with Jesus, including Jesus, are in heaven today. One of them. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand. Uh-oh. That Israel prevailed. When he let down his hand, the limit prevailed. Kind of interesting thing here. Forgive me while I start with maladies. The limit is attacking my, my allergies right now. But Moses' hands were heavy. I bet they were. You think Jesus' hands were, were heavy? And they took a stone and put it under him. No one took a stone for Jesus. You know the only aid that Jesus got on that cross was here's a, here's a sponge of vinegar. And put it under him. And he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands. The one on the one side. And the other on the other side. You can't do that to thieves on the cross. Because one of them, yeah, okay, you're God. Okay, see you in paradise. The other one, on you. And his hands were steady unto the going down of the sun. 6 p.m. That's when the Passover was to be killed. On the 14th of Abel. Now, I don't, very rarely do I check on the Bibles, modern Bibles. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And I not check them, I don't want to know. But if you're going to mess with the next verses, and I don't know if they do or not, you're going to mess with life as a Christian. If you change one word, You can teach the prosperity gospel. But if I don't read the King James English, I can never tell you that everything's going to be hunky dory in your Christian life. Let's go. And Joshua, Jesus, discomforted and elected the flesh. Now, did it say he got victory over the Lumnic? It does not. Hasn't there been places in the Bible that say they got victory and then they overpowered the, the, the victory to spoil the losers? It says stuff like that. But it said discomforted. It doesn't say victory. And when we're talking about the flesh, as a Christian, the only way you will get complete victory over a limitic is only one or two ways. Rapture or death. Now I may say at this particular time right now, I have gotten over that sin in my life. And my flesh has become discomforted. Five minutes from now, Eliminate may win. And Moses may have his arms down at his side. And at the next moment, Moses' hands may go up, and I've discomforted, eliminate my flesh, whatever that sin is, whatever that thing is. But I am not going to get final victory over eliminate the flesh until I'm dead or I've been raptured. And his people with the edge of the sword. Do I attack my flesh with a sword? Hebrews 4.12 I attack it with the word of God. 
I study to show myself approved unto God. And yet, Elimelech is going to attack me from the rear and catch me off guard. Elimelech may catch me in traffic. He may show something on that internet screen. He may something come out of my mouth that should not come out of my mouth. He may come up with a thought in my mouth. But whatever that sin that we have in our life, you've got yours, I've got mine. When you say no, you have made the flesh discomforted. You have made the flesh uneasy. It is not happy. All the years I've been street preaching. Last Saturday, we're going on with my mouth and stuff like that. That was the only time my flesh really said, you know what? Well, we don't need to be doing this. And I didn't want to do it. Spiritually. And my flesh of Blimlick a charge and went in. Don't do this. You're sore. You've, got to, you've done it enough times. Sit down and shut up. And I told him, no, we're going, and no matter, I, even, I had the right to even doing it. But I put a little bit down. And he wasn't happy. If you want to see how well a little is in your life, tell your flesh and God, say, I'm going to fast. For two or three days. For whatever reason. And you watch a little bit come in your life. And be discomfort. And be at ease. I'm hungry. Oh, oh come on. We need water. We're going to die. Israel shut up. Oh we need food now. God, we're going. Come on please. We need food. We're going to die down here. Stomach's calling. Kidneys are calling. We need food down here. That's a bit like fighting in your life. And the Bible says this comfort because it doesn't say victory because victory does not come until rapture or death. He's going to fight you. He's going to fight you from birth, new birth. He's going to fight you to death or rapture. And when you least expect it, Israel did not even expect this to show up. They saw the Egyptians coming, but they didn't see Abimelech coming. And the Lord said to Moses, write this for a memorial. You better remember your flesh is going to attack. If you keep that in mind, that I cannot trust my flesh, you're going to do well with God. When that moment you think, okay, I'm good, I'm fine, boom, you know, you just, you just got proud, you got pride, and you just fell. And if you get someone who's preaching prosperity, everything's going to be great. Everything's going to be wonderful. What do you do when Abimelech shows up? Abimelech, I mean, shows up. Well, where did that come from? Well, maybe you weren't saved. Really? You can't say that about the nation of Israel. You can't say about someone who truly got saved. I'm saved. The problem is still there. What do you do when the Bible says all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution? Paul wrote it once. I, I can't quote it. Let's see. I think it's over here. Romans chapter. I read it today. Romans chapter. I like how Romans, uh, Paul says that. This is what Paul says about Abimelech in his life. It's Romans 7, 15. This is Abimelech. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now, it is no no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. There's an Abimelech. I want to do right, Romans 7, 15. I want to do right. Then I do something wrong. Well, what is that? Is Abimelech showing up in our lives? God, how do you 
explain that? You gotta put him in discomfort. Well, God, how do I get that victory over? When I take you home, be absent from the body and present with the Lord, or I come up hither. So I'm trying to show you in your Christian life, you're going to sin. <laughs> Discomfort that sin. Get it right under the blood of God. First John 1, 1 9. And then move on. Don't give it opportunity. Put the brakes on it. For God says, remember, curse it in the right this for a memorial. In a book. What's that book? Anybody care to guess what that book is? It's called Exodus. Oh, see, if you trust Jesus Christ as you, everything in your life is going to be wonderful and great. It's in a book that says, no, it's not, buddy. Don't you think after Paul had the headaches, the ankle aches, the elbow aches, the belly aches, the buttocks aches, the jawbone ache after being stoned to death. Do you really think he would have fell for everything going to be great? You think after they've killed the first disciple with stones, Stephen? I forget. John was the last one to die. But he didn't die a violent death. The one before him that died, that died a violent death? You think they believed in the, in the prosperity gospel? Do you think the people in Fox's book are martyrs? Imelech, get this now, if he's the grandson of Esau, let's see, what chapter is that in? We'll see so we can find him. Genesis, I don't know the chapter. Genesis, let's see where he is. 25, you think? He's in the 20s, I think. Let's see, 20. Sorry. Oh, Jacob Oh, where's all those dukes? Oh, look for all the dukes. He's all right. Genesis thirty six. This is Esau's line. Now these are the generations of Esau who is Edom. Now let's come down to let's see here. Esau took the wives of the daughter of Canaan, Adela, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, and Aholibah, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zippo the Hivite. And let's see, I'm trying to find one to sit in a minute. Verse number four Adela bare to Esau Elphaz. And Bashemeth bear were ruled. Alright, now to verse 11. And the sons of Eliphaz were Teman. I need to go. Alright, Teman, Omar, Zippo, Gadot, and Kenaz. And Tizah, his concubine, to Eliphaz, Esau, sir, she bare Eliphaz a limonac. There it is. That is Esau's grandson. Uh, can we just take a little. Oh, I found this other day interesting note. Remember, I said the Bible does not mention grandmother, grandfather, grandchild. Do you know the only grandparent that's mentioned in the Bible? There's only one. It's a grandmother. And that's the grandmother of Timothy. That's the only one in the Bible ever mentioned. I thought that was in uh, Lois. But that's, that's a little bunny trail. That's interesting. You need to pay for that. But here is Eliphaz. He is the grandson of Esau. Do you know who Esau and Jacob were? They were brothers. So this character, Elimelech, when he shows up, he shows up, he's family. And you can figure out the family thing there. I've already tried to, I can't. He's Jacob's brother's son-in-law, whatever he is. So, Write this for a memorial in the book. This is here the book Exodus. And rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. Joshua, the soldier, Jesus, remind him. The flesh is going to attack. And 
know who you go to when you when your flesh attacks? Don't go to Moses the law. Tell Joshua, let's go to battle. Tell Jesus, come on Jesus, let's get suited up, let's get to battle. So far I've sinned, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, let's put the armor, let's give me victory through Jesus, through Joshua. I will utterly put out the remembrance of the Lord from under heaven. Has he done it yet? No. In Revelation 21 and 22 and eternity, you'll never hear a Lord again. How's that? The day you die, the day you are raptured, at that point you don't need to worry about him anymore. And Moses built an altar and called it the name of it Jehovah Nisai. For he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord, the, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord, no victory by us, will have war with Elimelech from generation to generation. Elimelech is live and well. And he hurts many Christian testimonies. And all you can do is 1 John 1, 9 and move on. And be alert to the flesh. Be alert. 